Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. I'm Tundu Abiola. I'm Biola Labi. Many Nigerians would have reacted with a bit of surprise when during the past week news filtered in to the effect that the federal government had outlawed the Almagerie system everywhere in its strongholds across the northern parts of Nigeria. But that was quickly denied by the authorities a few hours later. Following that development, critical questions are once again being asked about this big elephant in the room, which has been variously described as a tool for subjugation and impoverishment of the masses. To help us put some informed perspective on this is Aliu Dairu Aliu, columnist, researcher into religion and violence, as well as development worker. Aliu has also written in detail about the Amajiri scourge, from which we will now take him up. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Yo, thank you. Thank you yeah, for good being morning. here. Thank you. So let's start uh, off by, can yeah, you okay. explain to our viewers what exactly the Armagery system of education is, and especially taking it from its noble intentions or beginnings to its current state now? Uh, actually, we should start from the, uh, clearing the misconceptions on the Almagiri system. Uh, there are a lot of stereotypes on the Almagiri system of education because people think that uh, whenever we talk about Almagiri, it's, uh, it's all about uh, uh, boys roaming around the street with a scruffy looking and a, a, a begging bowl. There is actually a difference between Almagiri and a beggar. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to clear this misconception first, because a uh, Almagiri system of education uh, is an established education in Islam. Uh, it's kind of spiritual uh, education that uh, Muslims in northern Nigeria, not only in northern Nigeria, but, but some other parts of the uh, African continent, especially in Senegal and uh, uh, Morocco, uh, pass through this kind of system because the word Almagiri is also uh, part of the Arabic word. It, oh, it has its genesis from the Arabic word al muhajir that, that means one who migrates from one place to another in search for spiritual uh, education. And that's what the, the meaning of uh, al majri in the first place. So we have to, uh, uh, in the first place, try to uh, uh, bring a dichotomy between uh, al majri system of education and begging. Uh, so uh, what uh, uh, the advocates now are trying to do always is to try to make people understand there is difference between uh, an al majri and a beggar. Okay. Can I ask you to um, also to expand for our viewers, why are the two as so associated and closely linked? When did the begging start? Why is there a part of begging? Why is there a perception that Almagiri equals begging? Can you also clarify that so that people at home can understand why this is the way it is? Yeah, uh, in this case, we have to look back to the historical part of it. Uh, uh, many years back, when uh, many people in the northern Nigeria depend on agriculture and farming as their source of income, the Malams will want uh, uh, the, the, the children to be sent from villages or to, from other locations to other locations so that... <clears throat> so that uh, they will help him in farming or cultivating his land and they will give him uh, something in return. That is food to eat and then he will uh, also teach them uh, uh, Islamic education, especially Quranic education. Uh, then afterwards, then this kind of, this system, uh, uh, especially in the cities, now the Malams are no longer uh, farmers, so therefore the children have to go to streets or to uh, neighboring houses to beg for what they could eat. So that's when the begging starts. And the, even though this is how uh, most, uh, uh, I mean, al Majris uh, are, are, are begging or are, are sourcing for what they could eat, but not all of them beg. There are some of them that depend on spiritual economy. When I say spiritual economy, I mean, uh, in Islamic uh, uh, religion, or in Islam, there are uh, uh, Arabic or Quran is, uh, is written in Arabic with a sacred text. So that text could be written, and the people uh, drink the, uh, the, from the slate of that text. Uh, when, we, when the slates are washed, then people drink for health or for health benefit. 
Uh, so, so there are al-Majri that do such things, and there are those who uh, source for money uh, as errand boys in houses. So, so the, the, uh, but now in the cities, uh, uh, there are many, uh, uh, there are many al-Majris who don't have. Uh, uh, that don't have source of income apart from begging. And that's why uh, little children that cannot uh, uh, work as errand boys or cannot uh, maybe sell pure water in, in cities, now they don't have any other source of income apart from begging. So what was your reaction to the initial report that the Amajiri system was going to be prescribed and then the fact that a few hours later that statement was then qualified? Uh, actually, uh, I, I think many people in the north support this kind of uh, this law, even though there is an existing law that says uh, 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 compulsory education. I mean, I mean, Western secular education uh, is compulsory for all children. That's basic education is compulsory for all children, and the Almajris are deprived from such education when they are sent to other locations uh, to uh, to study. Uh, Quran, only Quran without secular education. Uh, so uh, actually, it's kind of a good move, but the uh, federal government must, in the first place, try to, uh, uh, to make basic education a reality, not just pre, I mean pre of values. It has to be a reality that, uh, 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 that it will be a very good. You cannot say just you ban this kind of education without providing an alternative. Because what we have today as basic and pre-education is not actually uh, a good system of education. We all know this. So uh, federal government uh, must, I think, bring back what good luck Jonathan, former president of Nigeria, uh, brought to the country. Uh, that's al Madri models of education must bring back that system of education so that it can be an alternative to that uh, uh, al-Majri system of education before it ban the system at all, at all. For people that don't know, can you expand on the Jonathan Goodluck um, al-Majri version of um, um, primary education that you speak of or the integration into primary education that you speak of? Yeah, uh, actually, it's a kind of uh, education that mix between the religious and the secular education, and also uh, try to bring a background that uh, uh, al Majri could sustain themselves in the labor market after they finish uh, higher level schools. It can be like a, a background upon which other or A level education can be built on. So it's also give them that spiritual education that they need and also give them uh, a background for secular education that can catch up with their needs in the 21st century Nigeria. So I, I, I just want you to describe to me the typical day of an al Majri child. What is the typical day from when they wake up to when they go to sleep today? Pardon? What is the typical day of a child that is in the Amaljuri system from the minute they wake up to the minute they go to sleep? And what are the conditions in which these, this, this full day is happening? Uh, Almajri schools uh, uh, start uh, from 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning, immediately after a uh, Subi prayer. Uh, then, and it closes uh, around, uh, I think, 7 o'clock. Seven o'clock, uh, and also uh, it is a week. Uh, it's a week time school, but uh, uh, with exceptions on Thursdays and Fridays, uh, where the students or the almajris would uh, go around and uh, do their things. It's like their weekends. The, the weekend uh, is on uh, Thursdays and uh, Fridays. Uh, and even though <clears throat> it starts from six o'clock in the morning, uh, but uh, there are breaks, there are breaks, like um, uh, around 11 o'clock, uh, the students will go for break, and it's for morning, uh, or they could have their breakfast then, and then uh, they will come back, 
around uh, like uh, 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 two o'clock, then they will be at the school up to like four o'clock. And the, some of them will also join the class from four o'clock or like five o'clock to uh, like six o'clock. And then they will also uh, go for another break. And then they will come back again like uh, around uh, seven o'clock to 10 o'clock. That's how it goes around always. And what are they typically learning during this, during this time? What are they learning? Uh, what they learn most of the times is uh, uh, Quranic education. They start by reading the Quran education, uh, uh, then uh, Quranic uh, scripture. Right. I mean, We're and gonna, then they, I'm going um, uh, to actually they, come back and finish that thought with you. We're going to take a quick break when we come back. Um, we're going to finish this thought because we really want our viewers to understand what their day is like. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Um, we're still with Aliyu Dahayru Aliyu, who is still with us in the Abuja studio discussing the Amadri system in the northern part of Nigeria. Thanks for staying with us. And before we were going on break, you were describing to us what the children are actually learning during these. And then based on what, if I, re, if I understand what you're saying, their days are sort of divided into three parts. Tell us a little bit about what happens in those different parts, because you say they start at 6, they go to break at 11, they sort of come, they come back in the afternoon, and then there's an evening section. Tell us what, those, what, what happens during those days, and where does this part of them going out into the street takes place? Because you didn't say anything about that. And that is actually the issue that the world, and it's not just Nigeria, it's the world that has said this is an issue. There are they're, they're, they're reels of studies that have been written about this. So I, I just want people to understand what the challenges are with this system, the current way it operates. Actually, uh, the people or the parents that send their children to al Majri schools uh, actually, uh, tr in their own philosophies, I mean, uh, they think that they are, the children have to pass through some tunnels before they could see uh, uh, a kind of light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, so therefore, they are like training them a kind of what we can call an Islamic stoicism. Uh, they must be trained to uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 be ready for the uh, difficulties of life that will come in the future. That's their philosophy in the first place. And another thing is, uh, uh, they send them to learn Quran because uh, uh, the Muslims, especially uh, those who are not uh, well versed in the religion, uh, think that uh, you can find everything in the. Quran. So therefore, when you study Quran, uh, you don't have to study other books. You can uh, uh, you can have all what you want after studying the Quran. So therefore, by sending the children to those schools, they think that uh, uh, they are learning uh, all what could take them through lives in here and hereafter. Uh, so therefore, what the uh, the student learn in the first place in the schools is. Uh, the Quran, the Quran. They start by learning uh, the short uh, uh, surahs, or I mean the uh, the short verses of the Holy Quran, and they start memorizing them at early uh, uh, at early ages of life. So they start learning that uh, at the early stages of life, especially when they are less than seven years old. Uh, uh, they start learning that, and then they uh, pass through that. But and they after the Finished in the Quran, which is a, a book of about uh, uh, many pages. I, I cannot count, but uh, it's a book like uh, uh, closer, not uh, uh, it's closer to uh, Bible, uh, the Quran. I, I believe most of us have seen the Quran. So they start by learning the Quran, and then they start memorizing the Quran after finishing the first pace of uh, learning the Quran. And after uh, 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 memorizing the Quran, then after they grow up, they will start writing their own Quran uh, from what they memorized earlier to see that they have a proficiency in memorizing the whole Quran. And that, that is the life of an almighty. Before you could pass through uh, what I, I, I told you about, that is spiritual economy. So, so how uh, long typically, uh, and the, how long? How long typically is their time 
in this um, in the academy? How long typically um, do children spend in the academy? Uh, it depends on the uh, uh, the level of understanding of the Almazari, I mean. Uh, and we know there are uh, gifted students, there are uh, like brilliant students, and there are those students who could not understand uh, better. So you can find someone stay uh, uh, like uh, uh, having many years without uh, uh, even, uh, you could not even memorize simple surahs of the Holy Quran. So therefore, you cannot say there are specific aids like in, uh, secular education where you could say like six years in primary school. Uh, in Almadri system of education, there are no years that you could spend, uh, there are no specific years that you could uh, spend so that you could say that uh, you have uh, reached to the, uh, 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 to, the, to the end of uh, studying Quran. Uh, and let's go back to the earlier question that you uh, asked me uh, about uh, why some Almadiris room uh, in the streets uh, or in the nooks and crannies of the cities begging. Uh, actually, you can, there are, uh, of course, there are two ones who leave the schools. Uh, who just don't want to join classes. They will go just room about uh, and end up in the hands of uh, sex workers, working for sex workers. And the, some of them would become uh, a source of, uh, uh, a, a kind of a threat uh, to the security of the nation. And then they end up becoming like uh, talks in the cities. So, uh, but uh, there are some that uh, go to school, but in, the, in those breaks, because the break is not a, a, a short break, it's kind of long break. When you leave the Almadri school from 11 uh, o'clock in the morning, then you could not come back until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So therefore, you could have hours for you to go and bake. That's what they do. And I told you earlier that now in the cities, in the villages, uh, 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 um, the Almazari's students or the Almazari's uh, would help the, uh, the Malams in cultivating lands or in farming. But in the cities, uh, and that would give him, uh, the Malam would give them put a, a return. But in the cities, their Malam have no land to cultivate. So therefore, they have to go and, uh, and find what they could eat. And that is uh, uh, where the enigma start. And so uh, in that time, between 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock, if the student is not too ruined, then he could, cope, uh, he could go and beg and then come back uh, to the school. Well, I want to address two points that you mentioned earlier, the intervention of former President Goodluck Jonathan. And he um, built, he invested, well, his administration invested billions of naira into building 157 Almajiri, you know, um, Sangaya, they call them. Yes. yes, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. But the reports, the current reports, say that a lot of those buildings are falling into disrepair. There are no roofs, that there are even no fences. Some buildings have generators they've never used because there's nowhere to use it. There's nobody mm -hmm. there. And that those schools are now populated, if at all they are, by community children and not the imageries that they were supposed to help. We always look to the federal government, but what is the role of state governments in ensuring mm -hmm. that these facilities and resources are dedicated to the people that they were intended for? I, I think this is a problem of our... Uh, uh, our government, uh, whenever a new party emerges or, or a new party takes it in the government, then it will abandon all the projects initiated by the uh, previous government. And this is our problem. Uh, I think if we could not stop this, there are a lot of projects that we would abandon that are very useful uh, to the people uh, in Nigeria. So uh, I think what the people government should do now, it should come back to the, uh, to the to those schools, repair them or reconstruct them and make people understand that they are very good and they are very important to their children for them to pass through them. Uh, and that will make people be more aware about the uh, importance of those schools. But uh, 
whenever we abandon school because uh, it's the previous government that we don't like that started the project, therefore we are going nowhere. Not only the Almadri schools, all other projects that we know. We don't have to abandon them. If they are developmental projects, we don't have to abandon them and say that uh, since we don't uh, belong to this party, uh, then we have to uh, abandon this project. There are, uh, there are uh, there is a, a state that we want to take this country to, and therefore it has to be a goal of every party. It has to be a, a goal of any party that could take over the seats. So therefore, if the federal government cannot sustain those goals, it has to allow the state government to control them. In Kano State, for example, where I came from, uh, there are schools that uh, are also abandoned by the uh, new government because it has some squabble of the previous government. And this is kind of a pain in the people in the state. So therefore, we don't have to uh, be doing this. The government should not be doing this because that one, you are not uh, uh, this, you are not helping your, your party. You are not helping the people in the Nigeria. You are only helping your own party. And that one uh, will not uh, help the country at large. And what is the role of population control? in controlling these issues that arise from the Almadri system. Because as you rightly said, not every child shows the aptitude. Because memorizing the Quran is actually such mm -hmm. an involved process. Not every child is able to do that. But parents, because they cannot take care of these children that they have born, just send them off to Almadri to be, to be taken care of on their behalf. And it leaves them vulnerable, exactly as you said. Begging sometimes is the least of the problem. Sexual exploitation, they could be recruited into insurgents. I mean, even last Monday, UNICEF said two girls and a boy were used as suicide bombers. There's no suggestion at all that they were from our Marjorie schools. Of course not. But, you know, our children are vulnerable when they're not being properly guided by their parents. Yeah, let me start by clarifying your question about the, the parents that send their children to al Madri school. Uh, actually, uh, sometimes, or many times, even though you can find some cases where the parents are actually uh, running away from poverty, and that's why they send their children to al Madri schools. And they, uh, they have many children, and they want to reduce the number of the children because they, don't, uh, they cannot sustain them. Uh, there are a parent that actually their parent they are, they are wealthy. They are imagine that their parents are wealthy enough. You know? They have many lands uh, in the villages and they have uh, many cattle actually. So you cannot say that it's poverty or it's uh, like uh, 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 like uh, what they call. Uh, it's a poverty that results from uh, many children that you, that, that parents have, but. There are those who believe this is kind. They are part, uh, This kind of education is a, a spiritual education. It's a spiritual education. So no matter how wealthy you are, you have to send your children too. So the concern here is about the uh, sexual exploitation or sexual violence. And uh, uh, another thing that uh, we have to understand is uh, uh, the issue of uh, insecurity. If we mean religious extremism or religious terrorism that uh, you could say about the uh, suicide bombings in the in, in northern part of the country. Uh, actually, yes, the, you could find a, a correlation between uh, uh, these children or al system of education and the violence, uh, especially religious terrorism uh, or, or, or extremism. But uh, most of the cases, this al uh, uh, Oh, this uh, tourists that we uh, that we uh, that we have in Boko Haram or uh, in other uh, 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 religious tourist organizations are not al -Majris. They do not even pass through al system of education. But the main concern is these children are, could be vulnerable, and these children could be vulnerable to uh, uh, to that uh, 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 religious terrorism. So uh, actually. Uh, the parent must know this. And the parent, we have to let the parent know that uh, these children uh, are vulnerable. Not only social exploitation. There are many vices that are uh, 
align with this uh, uh, Almaji system of education. Like, uh, you could see them dirty moving around. We could see them, uh, there is no one to take care of them. And they, uh, the Malam, the, the children are, uh, that are in front of the Malam are too many for him to take care of. And there's sometimes the small Malams, I mean, what, what they call uh, Gardawa, in Hausa language, that the smaller malam that uh, pass through the Almaji system of education and then they become like a, at a graduate or postgraduate level, uh, they actually sometimes uh, exercise balance on the younger ones. So the parent thank must you. know this. And uh, if we. Aleo Dahiro Aleo, thank you so thank much you. for your insights. I'm afraid we've run out of time. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's time now for a short break. When we return, Arise News analyst and producer Charles Ohwaku will be joining us to review newspaper headlines. Stay with us. <laughs>